This episode is about working in coffee, specifically specialty coffee. And you know what they say, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. I don't actually think that's true, especially in coffee. Some days it's very hard work, but I get the sentiment. And the point is, if you love what you do, working hard is rewarding. I wanted to do this video for a couple of reasons. Uh, it's a topic that comes up regularly. It's one that I see at either trade shows or over a beer or through Instagram or an email. But I wanted to give it some structure. Uh, I've got my notepad. I'm a big fan of a notepad. And I wanted to break this episode up into three topics. One, study the opportunities. Number two, develop self-awareness and core capabilities. Number three, be real. So those are the three topics for this episode. I'm gonna go through these one by one uh, and then probably round up with some kind of rousing summary at the end. Often what specialty coffee represents is one of these passion industries that we, uh, I put my, myself in this category, never had a five year plan, um, decided not to do a degree, went traveling instead. And I think I was inspired by my father who left school when he was 14, uh, got into Southampton Art School and left after two weeks and said, fuck it, I'm gonna go <laughs> do my own thing. Uh, so I sort of fall into that camp, uh, which is entrepreneurial camp. But I think what's very common is, especially coffee offers lots to explore. You know, and you almost don't have to worry about the career development in the short term. So what do I mean by study the opportunities? Well, it's quite simple really, which is, I mean, look at the businesses, the different types of businesses throughout the coffee supply chain, all the way through from growing coffee to it being made uh, in, in a cafe for someone to drink or potentially in another environment in someone's home. And look at the different companies that are part of that journey. And then look at each company and the kind of roles that company needs to be great, to be successful, to grow, for that company to operate. Now, I don't expect this to be something you do just before you get into coffee. In fact, I think it's something that you should probably always do. But my point is, before you make strong decisions about the career opportunities and what you want to pursue, you have to study the opportunities. And you have to do this because it's a very simple equation industry, which is there's a business that does something. It could provide a service or it could make a product. And you need to look at the team and the organization that needs to be built for that business to be successful. And there's a friend of mine, Kieran, he says when he went to get his first job when he was 14, his dad said to him, don't go in there and tell them what you want to do. Don't say you're going for a digital job because you like computers, right? Go in there and tell them what you're going to do for their business, because that shows that you understand impact. You understand that in the crudest sense, you need to be a part of the team that makes them money, because without that happening, the business doesn't exist. And the reason this is important is it's so easy in something like coffee, which is passion driven, to lapse into the mindset that I, I love coffee, I'm passionate about coffee, and to look for jobs to purely reward your journey in coffee. As in, I quite like to know more about this, therefore I'll get a job there. The only time that those two come together is when your interest in learning about coffee match the requirements of a role. It really is that simple. And of course you have to make that decision about exploring your interest versus your earning potential. Now, you probably didn't end up in specialty coffee if your primary goal was making as much money as possible. Uh, so it's not one of those industries. There are other industries where it's much easier to make money. Now we're gonna move on to point number two, which is self-awareness and the development of core capabilities. At this point, it's based around that classic interview question. What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? Now, I always try to figure out in interviews how I could <laughs> Have their weaknesses. <laughs> uh, um, but that's ridiculous. We are all stronger in some areas than we are in other areas. That's the reason we're better as a team, right? That's the reason we build teams with different character types who bring different things to the table, different backgrounds. So it's okay to have weaknesses. And in fact, I would encourage everybody to be as honest as possible with themselves about their weaknesses. It's just a good skill in life in general but 
it's particularly applicable in your work and your career. It's not good in the long run for you or the business that you work for or the business you create, if you're a founder or starting your own business, if you don't work to your strengths. Because at some point in the future, you're gonna come unstuck. Look at the core tasks you're doing day to day to perform a role. Is it project management? Is it data analysis? Is it managing people? And take away the coffee bit and ask yourself if this wasn't coffee, if I was looking for a job in any other industry where I didn't love it, where it wasn't coffee, would I go for a job that requires the individual to excel at those tasks? Are they the tasks, not just am I good at those tasks, not just, oh, am I capable of doing it, but do I like to do it? Is it something I find rewarding to do? Do I get energised from doing those tasks? So for example, if it's a project management role, say to yourself, would I be interested in doing a project management role if I was selling toothpaste or paper towels? And if the answer is no, then you shouldn't be pursuing project management in coffee. Ideally, you want to find somewhere where your aptitude, core capabilities and interests work with your love of coffee. That is the holy grail. Now, a lot of what I've said so far is about the individual being hard on themselves, being honest with themselves, right? But developing core capabilities is also about asking if you think the business is able to help you develop those, is able to give you that development. And it's about you being able to say to yourself, I'm not getting the development I need here anymore and leaving that business. Are you someone suited more to that scrappy startup? And actually when it becomes a bigger structured business, it becomes a bit too corporate and a bit too compliance and process driven and you move on and you go and find something else to start. A friend of mine uh, is exactly what they do. They know that about themselves and they go, this has been amazing. This has got to this stage. It's time for me to leave and go and start something else. Now, I believe that you can learn from everything you do and you're developing professionally all of the time through your experience if you are open to learning from every experience you have. But also we should seek out environments where we can learn and develop skills. And what I mean by that is not every business is gonna be able to give you that. In particular, small businesses and startups will struggle to give you that more than other businesses. And maybe you even need to look outside of coffee entirely for certain elements of your professional development. There's more traditional, classical professional development, a professional skills development course or training in a certain area. Startups will never give you that. They just won't. And actually bigger businesses that are much more structured are much more likely to give that clear training. They build it into their structure to bring someone in at a junior level and offer them that training and grow them. Of course, what you want to do when you put that time and energy into an employee is keep them from a, for a certain amount of time. Uh, you know, you train them uh, and then they get really good and then your business benefits. But you also recognise at some point they'll leave. And I guess that's the point with coffee is it's quite fluid. We, you, you wouldn't expect someone who works in an independent cafe as a barista, they get really good at making coffee, they become really good at customer service, they understand how the cafe works, maybe they move to a barista supervisor role or maybe they move to a store manager role. If it's not a multi-site operation, the development and the growth of that person stops. Uh, but ideally, whilst they were learning that and evolving their role, they were with you for a couple of years. And so you both benefited. And then of course, you know, they leave to continue challenging themselves, growing uh, in their career and their experience. Uh, and you benefited from what they brought to your team whilst they were there. That's really how this works. It's kind of a quid pro quo relationship, right? Between the business and the people who are part of that business, right? Of course, you're not gonna to learn to be a great roaster if you don't work in coffee or a great taster or buyer. They're clearly very apprenticeship driven jobs, right? And they're about putting the time in and learning it. Benchmarking is crucial, right? Go out and benchmark the roles. Go, what roles are there in this industry? So in another roastery, what roles are there? What is required of the role? So, you know, just looking at a basic uh, job application for a typical role. What are those day-to-day -day tasks? What makes up doing that job? Is that really what I want to do? 
right? And then of course, benchmarking the salary. If I choose this role, this is where I wanna be for the next three to four to five years, and that is a core point with those roles, right? Developing core capabilities in those kind of roles requires time, yeah? It could be coffee buying, it could be coffee exporting, it could be roasting, uh, it could be profiling, it could be production and QC, it could be the barista role. I mean, I think to do any of those roles very well, there is nowhere, no other industry to go to to pick up the training for those. They, you need to get into those roles and put the time in and you will develop those core capabilities. They're very much apprenticeship driven roles. And this brings me on to point three, which is be real. Now, in a way, this point th flows through everything I've probably shared so far, point one and two, about that honesty and that self-awareness. But I want to sum up here is be real about what coffee can and cannot offer you as an industry. And this would be the same in any industry, right? If you want to work in boutique specialist and niche, your earning potential is lower. In its place, you get to work in a very interesting area. Potentially, it's more creative, more dynamic. Your role has more breadth to it. What you're involved in is changing day to day. That's exciting, but that's not the same earning potential you'll get by working in a larger structured corporate business where you can grow through responsibility. In coffee, unfortunately, what that probably means is as you pursue that, you will work with less specialist coffee. These are just decisions you have to make based on the way the industry works. You can't have it all the way you want it. And that really is the key bit I would say here about being real. Try and think like the business. Think like the project, right? Which is, it's not there to simply give you a journey in coffee. It's there to be a business that's a part of coffee and there's a role that needs doing. And ideally, you can find the two that mix together. And a lot of what I've talked about so far is very much about being an employee in an organisation. But let's be real about the fact that one of the biggest opportunities for career development in specialty coffee is starting your own thing. It's entrepreneurial. You know, you look at myself giving, sharing my thoughts here, and my route in coffee has generally been entrepreneurial. And I see a lot of others who are as well. It's as far as industries go and the opportunity to develop ways of working, specialty coffee is particularly kind to the entrepreneur. It's, it's a, there's lots of opportunities for entrepreneurial behavior in coffee. Now, recently I was debating with a friend of mine that maybe you could break working, so what you do for work, up into two main areas, area A and area B. Area A would be turn up, clock in, do the work, which is pre-agreed, it's not particularly creative, uh, but you do it to extremely high standard, clock off and go home, however many hours a week. And that's about saying, well, we've agreed the task, here's the output. Now the pros to that are potentially lower stress, uh, it's clear what success looks like. Um, it, can, it can be enjoyable, it cannot be enjoyable. The cons are it potentially has less creativity, uh, less seniority, responsibility. And on the flip side of that, you've got area B, which is more typically sort of high responsibility roles, managerial roles. Um, these are roles that might have more flexibility in their working hours, they might not. Typically they are more creative, they have the opportunity for more seniority, uh, but they also have more risk. Uh, and they can be extremely stressful for that reason. And so often these two ways of working cross over, but back to point two about that self-awareness, it's about knowing what you're signing up for, right? And what you're pursuing uh, when you explore these. And with starting your own thing, I mean, you know, I think a good hard work ethic is always good, but it is essential if you want to start your own thing. The coffee industry is not an industry with a ton of margin and a ton of cash, right? It just isn't. You know, I look at it and what I've learned now about business over the years I've worked in coffee. And just to be clear, I became interested in the business side of coffee. And I'm talking about this now because I had to, because to see your vision come to life, to create something, you have to figure out how to make it work as a business. And, and the, the, the holy grail, the goal, is if you can create a business which actually feeds your vision. And 
they both grow together. The business and the vision grows, right? Now, I'm a big believer in the concept of the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. Growth mindset is about improving. Nothing's ever good enough. Let's move it forward. And the fixed mindset uh, is about, no, this is the status quo. This is the way it's done. Let's not rock the boat. Okay. The world's made up of both and it probably needs both to function, to be honest. But when you have too much fixed mindset, you've got a problem. And specialty coffee, I think, is particularly a growth mindset driven industry. Now, I don't think it matters whether you want to start your own business or you want to work uh, as an employee in specialty coffee. I think the things you need to do are the same. I think you need to study the industry and understand how it works, how these businesses work and how you can be a part of them. I think you need to work really hard. I think you need to be self-aware and develop your own core capabilities, understand your strengths and weaknesses, and always strive to be better at what you do.